Flying overseas has become almost commonplace. It's so easy to just book your tickets, pack your bags and jet off into the sunset without really thinking about what would happen if things were to go wrong. And when you're visiting friends and family abroad, we tend to prepare even less for our trip. We're heading home. We've been there before. What could possibly go wrong? This episode will explore the issue of travel insurance and the important role it should play in our holiday planning. But how many people really understand what it can cover you for or know about the potential risks you could be exposed to if you don't take it out? And how many people actually take it out before going off on holiday? We went into our local communities here in London to find out. No, because uh, sometimes some of the insurance companies, they, they just not liable at all. You know? I, don't, I just take a chance and just go. There are a couple of travel insurances that I've heard of, but I've not really had much time to um, digest into it very well and see what comes, what it comes with. Um, so I don't really take travel travel insurance. Never. <laughs> Do you want to do this? I, no, to me, it just didn't seem anything that was necessary. We've not been exposed to it. And we think, well, if we travel, we travel. We don't either do insurance or we don't. So that's the reason why we don't do insurance, because we think maybe another thing might be the insurance companies will just take the money and, <laughs> and go their way. Um, travel insurance, no, because I bought my ticket, which costs money. I send money to Nigeria, which costs money. Travel insurance, there's no point. It's still going to be so much money. Besides, why, take, why will I take travel insurance? Because even if I get into trouble in Nigeria, I've got families and friends in Nigeria who can help me out. So a resounding no for travel insurance then. It definitely doesn't seem to be viewed as a key priority for our communities when heading abroad. Many people feel they're familiar with their destination and that they don't need insurance for a trip home. The perceived expense of insurance and a common confusion over what travel insurance actually covers you for also seems to play a significant part. But Lillian Kabodi has highlighted a key problem for those prepared to take the risk and not take out insurance. Medical costs abroad can quickly run into thousands of pounds and without insurance, you could be saddled with a hefty bill. A lot of you know um, Africans and Caribbeans are not really into you know taking out travel insurance. Um, they believe that probably because they you know from there originally and they you know going back home um, and and the familiar and with the countries etc. So they're not really into taking out travel insurance. I mean, it's always like we always have to you know go through a lot of different scenarios to even sell one travel insurance to them. We sell travel insurance from about well to you know like tropical countries, which at long haul you'll probably have something like you know twenty pounds you know for a week. You pay twenty pounds or you having. To to pay ten thousand pounds, you know. So it's just you know, logical. It's just in you know, a sensible, and and just you know, important to take a travel insurance before traveling. We went to speak to insurance company Europe Assistance to help shed more light on why travel insurance is so important, what it covers you for, and how you can get the right policy. Well, I think the, the term familiar is a, a misnomer as such because risk is risk. It doesn't matter whether you're familiar with the country or not. Accidents still happen. Okay? The, you're still likely to fall ill. I think there's a perception that, yes, you can receive treatment from within the family, but in many circumstances, you're going to need to go into a hospital. Um, and following on from that, if it's serious enough, then bringing the person back to the United Kingdom, that's very expensive. I don't think people really think about it in that way. They think going back to seeing friends and family is warm and very cuddly. But the reality is the risks are still there. Once upon a time, the only place you could buy a travel insurance policy was a travel agent or indeed a tour operator. But now you can find it in the high streets with uh, a lot of retailers. Banks and building societies provide it. You can go on the web. And there's still the travel market out there, the classic tour operators and travel agents. So you can almost find it in every corner. The main two areas really is medical expenses uh, when they're abroad it, and that in, incorporates things like repatriations uh, back to the UK, ambulance costs in, in one area. The next one is cancellation if you needed to cancel your holiday in advance due to an illness or something like that. And the other little bits and pieces you'll find is uh, some cover there for baggage, for travel delay, but essentially it's the medical expenses element 
with cancellation on the back of that that's the real focus of what you're paying your money for. For as little as £50 for a two-week period of um, cover, you're going to be provided with the resources of an organisation that can help you out if you have a medical problem or indeed get involved in an accident. And not also from a logistical point of view in that we have the doctors, the nurses, the equipment and the experience, but there's also insurance provision behind that service in, also, you know, in order to pay for some of the medical bills some of which are going to be quite horrendous because it is a realistic possibility that you could end up with a bill of circa 30 to 40 thousand pounds if you're taken seriously ill in one of the African countries. Now if you don't have travel insurance how much is that 30 thousand pounds worth? So insurance is easy to buy and relatively cheap compared to what medical bills could mount to if you had an accident abroad it can also cover you for a wide range of eventualities, aside from health concerns. You never know what might happen whilst you're away, and insurance allows you to minimise the problems you might face should the worst happen. The Foreign and Commonwealth Office knows this only too well. Each year, its embassies and consular posts abroad deal with thousands of cases involving British nationals who need their help. We talked to an FCO official about a typical case they had in the Gambia. But one particular case comes to mind in the Gambia as a very unfortunate, very severe road accident. The young man involved very severely broke his leg. Um, if he'd been in the UK, quite apart from the fact it would have been you know, the National Health Service and free treatment anyway, he didn't have any travel insurance, so he had to pay in country. But as part of the treatment, they didn't actually have the equipment to pin his leg, which they would have had in the UK. And they were suggesting amputation as the option. But it was after quite a bit of intervention, a lot of negotiation with the Foreign Office working with his relatives back in the UK, they were able to get him flown back safely. And of course it did cost his relatives a lot of money because he didn't have the travel insurance. But he went back to the UK and had the pinning operation safely here. This, of course, is just one example of the type of problem you could face abroad. Anything could happen. But think how much easier it would be to cope in any given situation knowing you had a travel insurance policy to cover most costs and eventualities. And as we found out from Europe Assistance, the cost of medical treatment abroad can really reach astonishing proportions. Um, for a person who, I'll give you a range of situations in the Caribbean that a person could experience mm. uh, and some ideas to likely costs. Mm. If we're talking about something as simple as, I would say simple, as very flippant, okay, gastroenteritis, you're looking at somewhere between £100 and potentially £300 okay, for a visit to a doctor. If we're looking at a, uh, a simple fracture, um, again I'm being very flippant because no fracture is simple, then we're looking at somewhere in the region of about £6,000 to have that sorted out. But the higher end mm. in the Caribbean, we had a situation last year where somebody uh, unfortunately uh, suffered severe burns um, due to an accident with a flaming tequila. Very simple drink, okay, very common drink. Uh, unfortunately, that person was 16 years of age, uh, and that cost a total of about £35,000. So, a clear message from our experts. No matter how many times you've been to your destination or how well you know it, things can still go wrong whatever country you're in. It's important to make the right kind of preparations before you leave the UK. And top of the list is taking out that vital insurance policy. Your friends and family may be around to provide support in a crisis, but their financial support may not be able to stretch that far if you require medical assistance, as you may not be covered by the healthcare provisions of your destination. And as we have seen, insurance is actually relatively cheap and easy to buy. Remember, shop around and check what your policy covers you for. So, what should you always do before you go away? Here's a handy checklist to help you plan your trip. Take out a comprehensive travel insurance policy. Obtain health advice and get any vaccinations or medications you may need. Remember, you could well be going to malaria-prone region. Make sure your passport is valid and fill in the emergency contact details. Get any necessary visas. Update yourself on your destination. And remember, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office website also offers a wide range of information to help you plan your trip. Why not check out our visiting friends and family page at www.fco.gov.uk 
forward slash friends and family for an easy to follow travel checklist of things you should do before you go.